Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the NRG series here live in Indianapolis. We are playing a Pioneer 10K. My name is Will Hall, better known on the internet as the Will Hall EXP, and I am joined by the Super League extraordinaire, Mr. Doomwake himself, and we're going to bring you round number six of Pioneer Action. Remember, there is nine rounds today, followed by a cut to top eight. We have 227 players all battling out to try and get their slot to, into the end of year Players' Championship event. We've got a few players already locked for it. We're going to see if we can get them on the screen for you now, or maybe we're going to do prizes next, actually. Let's go with the prizes first. Then we'll find out who's uh, going to be locked already. So these are the prizes that we're battling out for. First place today takes himself a nice $2,400. But more importantly, so a lot of players playing this weekend, it's those points you see there on the right of your screen. 30 points for taking us down. And then it goes down in fives, all the way down into 32nd place. And then you get a few more just for turn up. But all these points, these can add up at the end of the season, right, Devin? You know, you've been there. You've grinded out events. How many times have you missed? Let's say you come ninth place on one point or, you know, you, you just need to get yourself into that top 16, that one event, but you dropped to X and three where if you battled it out, you would have been able to get there. Every point matters in these events. Talk to me about it. How, how important are they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw just last year, Connor, Mal Connor Mullally, just by the skin of his teeth, was able to get in by that single point. So every single point at these, you know, even the top 64, top 128, every single point matters in these events. And that's what these players are fighting for. And, you know, you get a little bit of money helps as well, right? Gets your dinner, covers your expensive to get here because these are things aren't cheap, flights uh, and accommodation, etc. But they are trying to battle it out for the end of year. Unless we've got, uh, do you want to go with prizes for tomorrow or do you want to go to the end of year? So I'm kind of getting, seeing what we see on the screen. Let's go, let's go, let's go see who's already qualified. Let's see who is playing in the championship at the end of the year already and what the players this weekend are trying to battle out to join these players you see on the screen here. There's been numerous events throughout the year. We see last year's winner coming across and then we've got a winner every single month as long as three of them in July from that Team Trios, remember? And we do have a Team Trios event tomorrow, which is going to be modern. So if modern's your kind of your jam in, in magic, you definitely want to be tuning in. Hit that follow button. Any of these players stick out to you, Devin? Uh, I mean, I guess probably the the name that probably sticks out the most is Stephen Dykeman. Just you know, started off the year on an absolute tear, crushing both events, and uh, really hasn't looked back the entire time. And then you know, you also notice we have six annual leaderboard spots that we're gonna cl gonna crown. Excuse me, after the end of uh, the next. Yeah, event. there's gonna be a lot of them. Okay, so we got players to watch. Who's turned up this weekend? Who is battling it out? How many of these names? Well, obviously, I, I'm in Europe, so I'm not. You know, I don't play day week in and week out with these players. Obviously, I imagine you battled it out with many of these players. Anyone stick out for you here? Uh, well, our five and O's here: Will Kowalczyk and Benjamin Unger, who we uh, may or may not have in the feature match area. Those <laughs> players are just absolutely crushing today. Uh, Cliff Boyardi, Fletcher Johnson, Piper Powell, all four and one. Very, very uh, prominent names, and then a couple of three twos: Ryan Hayes and Sarah Shearing. And again, like we said, these players just want to fight it out to the very end of the event to get as many uh, championship points as they possibly can. Like I'm, I say I'm on the other side of the globe right now, and I every time I see an NRG event, I see Will. Either winning these events, top eight in these events, that he's absolutely been on a tear this year, taking those so many events. I've got a, a win, I believe, last time I was commentating, that was in Legacy. Now we're in Pioneer format and he's still tearing up. This man doesn't seem to lose. No, absolutely not. He's uh, just been crushing it the entire time. And uh, yeah, one of the one of the we just saw will on last last round on feature matches to absolutely destroy. And uh, yeah, he's been crushing it. Well, I think the players are ready and shuffling up. So tell us who are we going to be seeing this round and what decks are they playing? So on the right of your screen, we have Hunter Ovington on Gruel Midrange and then uh, Derek Davis that we saw last round on Enigmatic Fires. This Gruel Midrange deck, Will, it's got a, a fancy new card here in the form of the Huntsman's Redemption. I've been playing a lot of this Gruel deck and uh, that card has been awesome. We'll see if it's maybe here on turn two. That's a reckless storm seeker, I believe. But yeah, this rule deck is trying to get the game over with as quickly as possible. Use mana elves and curve those into powerful three drops. And uh, Derek with the enigmatic deck just wants to kind of establish a bunch of enchantments in the battlefield early and uh, parlay that into an enigmatic incarnation. Yeah, we, you know, this, this gruel deck is kind of the breakout deck from the RC in Europe. You know, I was you know privileged enough to cover that. And we saw this deck pitting up so many good numbers because I say it's got the new, the new saga in it. But it's also got, uh, you know, we saw a lot of thrill seekers uh, actually finishing off damage, being able to, you know, use the abilities, get a giant creature, attack them, then fling it at them and just get close the game out of almost nowhere. It was so impressive to see. 
Yeah, Valdera and Thrillseeker are also extremely powerful when combined with the Akroan War, because you can set up spots where you go Akroan War, steal their thing, and then on the second turn, which is the chapter two on Akroan War, you play the Thrillseeker, target their thing that you stole, and then you can just sort of fling it at them. So you kind of get this like threaten plus fling, fling effect that normally you would only be able to find in Rakdos midrange, but we see this here in the uh, the Gruul deck as well. So both players kind of off the races, turn and burn, doing what they need to do. We've got a bit of uh, Mallow Accelerant on one side, then we've got some removal on the other as we see that ley lines binding hit the battlefield. But one thing we are seeing is two companions. I know, you know, I've tuned into your stream quite a lot over the years. I know you've had a bit to say about these companions. Which one of these two do you believe is to be the stronger of the two? Um, I mean, tough to say because Yorion, I think, has more impact in the battlefield, like the ability to just reset a bunch of your permanents, especially in Derek's deck. There's so many enchantments that say when this card enters the battlefield, draw a card or kill a creature. So being able to just play Yorion and, you know, draw two, kill two things. And uh, that's just like a really, really massive thing. But Gigantha is probably more ubiquitous just because it's easier to uh, companion that card. Also, not banned in another format that's pretty popular that we'll be seeing tomorrow. That's Remember, ladies and gentlemen, triple modern tomorrow and uh we're just scooping wow. up that's too much damage on the <laughs> side for quick. derek here oh it's derek derek davis we've seen absolutely on a tear we've seen the last couple of rounds absolutely you know five and oh in this with his igmatic fire deck that he took to the pro tour to a second place finish in that game there wasn't enough you know it looked like he was kind of keeping it under control but that was like what a turn three win is is that how that's meant to go is that exactly what grew wants to, it to happen or are they just get you know kind of lucky there well, I mean, if you look at Hunter start, we had Elf into Stormseeker. That's kind of the ideal start. Derek was able to have a removal spell for the first Stormseeker, but Hunter had a second one, and the second one went unchecked. And once that thing flips, it presents a lot of damage. A lot of damage. But we've got do have their deck list, so we can get them up on the screen for you now. We're going to start off with Derek's deck list. This is the Igmag Fires deck, which obviously has a lot of one ofs in it for numerous reasons. It is kind of a toolbox deck, uh, the, the go to one, I'd say, in Pioneer format. A lot of cards on here, but more importantly, let's focus on that side. Cyborg. Anything we can be bringing out the cyborg to kind of, you know, show up this game two and three moving forward. Honestly, Derek doesn't have a ton here. You could argue that maybe temporary lockdown is something to clean up the Llanowar Elves and Elvish Mystics, but there's not a ton of targets past that. Rest in peace, not worth a lot. Alpine Moon, not really here. Mystical Dispute and Rending Volley pretty bad against the Gruul decks and Hanged Executioner and Archon of Amiria running at the sideboard. So if you're Derek, maybe you want to reach for Hanged Executioner just as sort of a removal spell. Uh, and then again, maybe the lockdowns, but there's really not a lot. I mean, here they are you know, battling out on the top table. So there's a chance they know what each other is on. But it is a closed deck for this tournament, which is makes decks and uh, deck building very different when it comes to these sort of big tournaments. So you know, if we knew it was against the Gruul Vehicles deck, potentially you would have kind of, you know, mulliganed a little bit harder to try and get hit things like the Chains to the Rocks, Portable Holes is kind of early interaction. If you didn't know, then, you know, it's a pretty reasonable you get run over by these Gruul decks, right? They are super explosive, as as we've literally seen there. Uh, we'll see if we've got the uh, the other uh, the Gruul deck here. We'll see if we get Hunter's deck up for you all on the screen. So this is the deck that did take the European RC by storm. Anything here stick out to you? Any sort of like fan favorites? I know you, we talked about the new card, but anything else? So typically, when you want to sideboard from the Gruul side of things, you want to look for uh, cards that blow up enchantments because Derek's deck is revolving around cards like Leyland Binding and Enigmatic Incarnation. And if we take a look at Hunter's sideboard, there are two Cinder Vines to be able to destroy those artifacts and enchantments, along with a Tranquil Frillback, a relatively new card. So definitely going to want to access to those. And then the other thing that you want to consider is maybe some of these sticky threats that are harder to answer, something like a Clothis, God of Destiny, or Hazard the Fervent. And uh, that should be basically everything that Hunter wants to bring in. I just wanted to point out these Hunt Sprint Redemption. Uh, th this card has just been so good for me. You know, it's a, a brand new card from Wilds of Eldraine. Absolutely phenomenal card in this deck. Just offers you a ton of early pressure. A lot of flexibility too. Chapter 2 can search for a creature or a basic land card. And uh, I've been really, really impressed with that card. Yeah, and can also kind of, if you time it right, can marry quite well with the Archon's War, right? Because you, you steal their creature, then you sacrifice it and go and find what you need. Yeah, we've seen, as I say, doing a lot of work in Pioneer, especially. I think this might just be a, a, a the, the, the 75 of the one that top eighted in Europe. I mean, a lot of things kind of thrown back to me because I just want Hazrats in like every format all the time. But here we go. That is going to be both players' deck list. I think they're just finishing up shuffling. So we're going to have a little look, see, see how they're going to get on. And we're off to the races. Both players keeping their opening sevens. Remember, Derek, one game down here. So he will be on the play. Hunter going to start off with probably one of the more powerful turns in 
Magic the Gathering in total. We would turn one lower else, but that is going to eat a Chandra's. Remind me of that card. Oath of Chandra. Oath of Chandra. Thank you. See, I knew you'd be all over it. <laughs> two mana etb deal three damage and you know the really important part here for derek is that it's you know kind of just the similar thing to a generic removal spell but the important part here is it's an enchantment that's on the battlefield and when you're combining that with stuff like enigmatic incarnation which is a card that derek is looking to cast on turn four basically every single game to kind of parlay that into you know this massive overwhelming uh advantage and, you know, a lot better when you're on the play for Derek, you know, so then the elf doesn't get his uh, chance to untap and potentially power out a free drop. So, you know, we're seeing the the kind of advantages of play draw. We do see this and it is talked about quite a lot in the Pioneer format. Uh, do you think it is as bad as what people say it is or, you know, is it really as bad as people say it is, I guess? I mean, there are certainly decks that are better on the play. Like you have the red green decks that have Lana War Elves, sometimes Absan Grease Fang, very advantageous when they're on the play. But then you look at decks like Blue Eye Control, Rakdos Mid Range, where they have catch up tools when they're on the draw. Like Rakdos has, you know, Fatal Push Thoughtseize, a plethora of one mana spells. Blue Eye Control has various wraths of, of some kind. So, I mean, there are certainly matchups where play draw matters more. But in the grand scheme of things, I, I think it's maybe a little bit overblown. Well, we saw a storm seed come down there and getting eaten up by LA Lines Binding. Super powerful. Uh, I say six mana enchantment. It's not rarely ever paid six mana for that, especially in all the formats you see it played in. As speaking of powerful enchantments, here comes Fable the Mirror Breaker. Going to bring along with it a 2 2 Goblin Shaman token. Are we going to. Yeah, we've got the one of the, uh, the uh, NRG ones. This is what you get for winning the team events. Very heads up token to be made, I'd say. So it's going to see a lot of play in the. Uh, up and coming years until you know the power creep eventually gets that card out of it but we do see it being very good and getting stomped here from a bone crusher giant and then we're just going to play a big oh, i want to say it's, it's still a giant right the the uh love struck it beast. is a giant or is it no it's a beast noble I think, Damn it. yeah i think it's a beast beast noble <laughs> i feel like it's like a giant enough, a giant beast it's a big five five and while we've got two one ones on the battlefield we can start turning that sideways as early as next turn but how can derek kind of bounce back from this I'm looking to see if we've got any sweeper effects in the main. Doesn't look like we do, unless we boarded mm. in some of those uh, lockdowns. No, Derek doesn't really need a sweeper here. I mean, honestly, the card he's looking for is Enigmatic Incarnation. If that card hits the battlefield, you could say sacrifice the Leyline Binding to go get a 7-drop, potentially a Traxa Grand Unifier or even Agent of Treachery. Um, but yeah, it looks like we don't have that. We're going to Skyclave Apparition to get rid of the Lovestruck Beast. And yeah, Derek doesn't have, you know, a ton of, like, ton of stuff going on but he's you know really really keeping hunter off of the back foot here and that's kind of derek's main goal here yeah looking at how it doesn't look like it's, uh, i think we've got two cards in hand there so but you know remember adventure super powerful mechanic we've just seen it in the new uh wilds of a drain set so a lot of those cards kind of making their impact in pioneer as well but just being able to get two spells out of your one card especially you know, in magic we always say two for ones are great just being able to get two spells out of one card in your 60 card deck it, it, we, we see these super advantages you can have for the more that you can put in your deck especially if you can get some uh extra advantage from it what's the uh is it innkeeper or the the, the old one one Whenever you cast a spell off adventure, you get to draw a card. Is it proper? Edgewall, Edgewall Innkeeper, yep. Edgewall Innkeeper. Like, again, with, that card's not seeing as much play, you know, because we've now got two sets with uh, um, Adventure out. But you know, who knows? A lot of deck builders out there in the uh, Planeswalker verse that we have of Magic the Gathering. Derek being one of the more powerful ones and turning up this weekend. How is he going to go about this turn? Five mana available to him untap with the you know go went ahead and flip the fable this turn again really just wants to try and find enigmatic but i mean even if he doesn't have enigmatic can spend some mana picking up yorion and you'll notice will there's a lot of permanence on the battlefield that happen to have entered the battlefield abilities so if that yorion gets picked up and cast next turn you could blink the skyclave kill something else blink the oath uh, looks like we're going to copy a Skyclave to get rid of the Lovestruck Beast. And, you know, again, Derek's not, you know, play, not, Derek doesn't have any of the Haymakers, like no Fires of Invention, no Enigmatic Incarnation, but just doing a very, very good job of keeping Hunter off of, you know, a tremendous amount of pressure and uh, just going to buy a lot of time to get to those powerful cards. This can't be good. <laughs> when they're when the shocking, shocking in stomping grounds. Land, huh? Yeah, this, this, this can't be going well. Are we, are we going full beat down here? Just turn everything sideways. I guess there's just a bunch of 2 twos on the other side of the battlefield, so his mute vaults would trade if they're to be blocked. And we know the late game is going to potentially be going to Derek Davis anyway. So, what? yeah, I kind of like this uh, attack here. Coming in for right. eight, right? 
Yeah, and if you're in Hunter's position, you kind of want to trade the Skyclave Apparition and the Glass Pool Mimic because you know about the Orion that's looming, right? So if you don't trade off for the Skyclave and the Glass Pool Mimic, if you if Derek gets to keep those cards in play scot free, then you can just say where you know you just you're just letting Derek untap and eventually get to that Orion and get so much more value out of it. Oh, even have the perfect illusion token. Remember that comes back. You don't get the creature back from underneath Skyclaves. It is exiled, but you get yourself a, a blue spirit X and X, depending on what the CMC of the card was, in this case being free. That's why you see a free counter spit on top of it. But we do get it does get to untap now. And he does have the Kiki Jiki on the battlefield ready to tap. If he can throw down some sort of big threat this turn. Um let's have a little look. See what's the best you think he can get down there? What would you what would you uh, like definitely... to see at the top of your deck? Definitely wants to still find the enigmatic incarnation. I mean, he can copy Skyclave Apparition to say maybe kill the Huntsman's Redemption. We're going to start with the Frill back. Okay, so that's going to pop the Huntsman's Redemption. And now we can actually even potentially, yes, we're going to probably go copy Skyclave to get rid of the Bone Crusher Giant. Then the Skyclave copy can maybe trade for a Muta Vault. You can trade the Frill back for a 3 3. But I mean, honestly, even, you know, without that card like Enigmatic Incarnation, these exchanges weirdly sort of favor Hunter. Yeah. You know, I mean, every, every point we get in just leaves us one, you know, even more open to some to a Thrill Seeker win. Like Thrill Seeker just wins you games out the blue. Only two copies in the main. Something that, you know, th these deck is kind of stock in the list. Now, you don't want the full four. You kind of want it as a uh, almost a two to target that you can get from the Huntsman if you get down that route. But we're going to start off with an attack for seven here, getting in with the free free Beast and the uh, Giant. We're going to make a copy. It looks like Derek is going to... I think we're copied the Frill back. Okay, so we're just going to trade, trade, which makes sense. You know, just wants to clear the board as much as possible. Does not want to take any excess damage because, as you mentioned, Derek is fully aware of the presence of that Voldera and Thrill Seeker. And if that card comes off the top, it represents a lot of damage. One thing I will mention, Hunter, you know, wisely leaving up a mana for that Cindervine so that if Derek does top deck the Enigmatic Incarnation, we can go ahead and just pop that immediately. I'm just having a little look see at Thrill back and saying, wondering if you do want to trade that off because obviously we can pay green on that ETB when it when it enters and gain four life. Don't know if that's something that he would have been interested in. I think Derek was tapped out that turn. Okay. Yeah, we. Well, I think pretty sure we tapped out. A really, really big find here for Derek. The deputy of detention. It might not look like a ton, but being able to kill that token because Skyclave does not hit tokens, so that's actually really, really massive. And now you even have the reflection plus deputy to be able to kind of clear whatever else Hunter top decks. Well, we do have a Cinderbinds member on the other side of the battlefield. That one's a huge one. Every time we cast a non-creature spell, we're going to take a point of damage. And we can activate it. One sacrifice. It looks like that's what we're going to do doing here. Destroy target enchantment or artifact. Its controller loses to life. What do you like getting back here? We've got a lot of targets here. Or well, I say even getting back, we could just take out the uh, the Kiki Jiki because that is going to be a nuisance going forward. He yeah, you have to kill the Kiki Jiki here. I'm just curious as to the timing because we could have pop the cinder vines before playing the chariot now you're actually giving derek the opportunity to we actually could have copied the skyclave to kill the chariot i'm wondering if if derek didn't want to do that looks like we're going to copy the deputy to kill the one one token the chariot's going to resolve that's going to bring back two more two twos so interesting sequence there you know the couple of things that maybe could have gone a little bit differently um, but hunter chose to to pop the fable and i do like that decision because again with the skyclave and the deputy face up you really cannot afford to give derek that you know constant ability to keep copying removal spells here comes another challenger doing a free damage that's going to take out one of these wolves and now we're going to start hitting this yorin in hand feel like we just we, we've been using our mana every turn we haven't had the opportunity yes we are going to put it in so we know there could be a big turn next for derek davis on the left of your screen pass it back to hunter hunter's got nine damage to do to be able to close this game down can we do it? we do have a mute vote there amongst the our lands one card in hand we draw for the turn didn't get a good look at it but it yeah i think the card that that hunter really wants to find here is a crow in war because then you could say a Crow in War, or something like the Skyclave, use that to crew the Chariot. It looks like we're just going to combat. So use the Muta Vault in the Cat to crew the Chariot, attack with the Chariot, make a copy of the Cat. That's going to be an attack in for four. Derek has to decide if he wants the Chump Block or go to five. Five is kind of a risky life total because, as we talked about earlier, that Voldera and Thrill Seeker, that plus the Chariot represents six damage. That would be lethal if Hunter top yeah, deck that card. Sure. Like, I feel like, what, what else are we doing with Skyclaves right now? Uh, not Skyclaves, with the... Uh, uh, so the deputy, deputy of detention, he wants to keep on the, 
the battlefield because of the Yorion. So you can Yorion blink the deputy to kill the cat tokens. Okay. I, I, I can, I'm down and for then, that. That makes sense. I was trying to work out like, why are we not jumping up? But yeah, because we've we got the Yorion next turn, which is nine, nine out of ten times is going to be our play, which will be pretty devastating here, I'm going to say, because, you know, we get to, we can flicker a couple of things. We can do free damage to something. No way of drawing cards yet, though. That's the one thing we're missing, but being able to deal with the board, we, we can kind of have that under check, right? Right. So most likely what's going to happen is you're going to see the Yorion blink the Oath, the Skyclave, and the Deputy. Skyclave blink is going to give Hunter a 3-3. Then when everything comes back, the Deputy is going to clean up the Cat Tokens, the Oath is going to kill the 3-3, and then the Skyclave is going to kill the Azekas Chariot. So Hunter is going to be left with just a Land of and a Mutavault, nothing else in the battlefield. But again, as we mentioned, Derek at 5. So if you have to, if you figure... Uh, Voldaren Thrill Seeker counters on Mutabolt. That's four damage, plus the Thrill Seeker itself is the fifth point of damage. So, okay. believe it or not, Thrill Seeker, even after all of these removal spells, will is still a lethal top deck. It's, it, that, the card's crazy. It really, really is super powerful with how it works. So, we're going to see everything's going to get flicked here. Nothing's not. Uh, they've been keeping track of day and night, so it does come back as night. Now, where's all this damage, uh, uh, all these targets going to go? For us as commentators, this is going to be pretty hard because we're just going to have to rely on finger pointing. But once everything's kind of cleaned up in a few moments for you, we'll be able to see what is going on and then we can work out what is left on the battlefield. So it looks like the chariot's going, through seekers yep. going. Just like we said, everything but the elf. You're all over it, my friend. You're all over it. Big Funny enough, that elf, is, that elf, that mana from the elf is the exact amount of mana that we would need for a lethal thrill seeker. But looks like we don't find that here for Hunter. But second chariot's still not that bad of a follow up. It's going to be hard to attack past the four or five Yorion. But again, Hunter just continuously, you know, representing a, a big battlefield and just going to continue to make Derek answer it over and over and over again. Yeah, kind of doing what, what the deck does, you know, living off the top of the deck now. Now the late game is obviously going to be all for Derek. Derek. I imagine it's saying I'd like to gain four life here and go up to nine. Let's look at what's happening. Obviously, both players yeah, reaching for the life pads. And then a Fable the Mirror Breaker to follow it up, bring along a Goblin Shaman token. Not a bad turn. Yeah, you... You notice Derek actually kind of like pick up his hand a little bit to note, you know, to, he was like motioning that he wanted to kill the cherry with the Knight of Autumn, but decides to gain the four life instead and probably recognizing that Thrill Seeker is one of the cards that he can lose to. Now, if we draw Thrill Seeker here, we can go tap the two cats, crew the chariot, Thrill Seeker, two counters on chariot, that's six damage, plus the Thrill Seeker itself is seven. So not quite enough for to, to deal that nine point of damage for Derek, but... You could even put Derek in an awkward spot where you just go counters on the chariot and, uh, and like attack with a 6-6. Six, six. Looks like a right. storm seeker. It looks like we've turned in everything. So, so that's going to crew the chariot. Remember, we've got a trigger. We go on tight creatures, you're going to get plus one, plus O oh, in haste as well. Be interested to see what you should target with that. I think it might be the chariot because then it can't, not very good block with the Yorian. The chariot will be a 5-4. Uh, yep, yeah, makes a lot of sense. Cat. So, I mean, if you're Derek, your best block here is, you know, say Yorion, eat one of the cat tokens. Looks like we're trading. And then I guess you can go put the two one there and the one three there. And then so you would lose a cat and you would trade. Yeah, trade the knight in the Yorion for the cat and the chariot. So, I mean, honestly, if you're Hunter, not that bad of a, a trade for you because you are getting that Yorion off the battlefield, which is a card for, it's really hard for you to kind of attack past. Yeah, you know, you know, as I keep saying, the late game is going to favor Derek here, right? Eventually he's going to draw a, a fires and be able to go off and, you know, enigmatic, so and go off and start, you know, turning this game, getting himself something like an attractor. Hunter has to close down this game and he can't do that way. He leaves permanents on the other side of the battlefield. So getting these attacks in, getting these trades, keeping the battlefield minimal. So when we do start top decking some of our bigger threats as well, we can, uh, you know, potentially won't be as much on the other side. But Fable going up to two, giving us the ability to draw extra cards this turn. I think we ditched a land there, so we get a second one. So that's two cards drawn for the turn. Can we utilize these? That's four mana. That's an enigmatic. This is this is going to be a big turn at nine life. This is going to be very hard for Hunter to try and uh, fight uphill here. Yeah, that's a really, really insane top deck here. So um, typically what Derek would want to do here is sacrifice the Leyline Binding to go get a 7-drop. Now, the 7-drops, let me just pull up Derek's deck list so I can double-check here. You've got, a, you've got an Attractor or time. Agent. Yep. 
tracks our agent. So agent of treachery can go ahead and steal. There's not a lot that's worth stealing. I guess the Reckless Stormseeker. The only problem, Will, with getting a Traxa is what happens if Hunter draws a Crow in War? Because then that, you can go a Crow in War, steal a Traxa, Stormseeker, give it haste, and that's almost game. That we actually seen that in uh, in the RC in Europe. That's exactly what happened. But looks like we're going to try and find ourselves a free drop here. Getting rid of the uh, the Oath of Chandras. Now let's have a little look at what free drops we've got. We do have another Mimic in the deck if we want to go get that. Uh, and yep, that's going to be what we're going to go find. So I'm guessing we're copying the Deputy Detention here. Get some more tokens off the battlefield. Or do you think... Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's where we're yeah, going Mimic, go. Mimic, copy Deputy, clean up the cat tokens. Makes a lot of sense. And I really like that discipline from Derek. You know, uh, you know, a lot of players, I think, would just say, I want to just get my Haymaker, get the Atraxa in the game. But I think Derek recognizing the that's the one way he loses, right? Is if he gets Atraxa and there's a Necron War off the top of the deck for Hunter. So I think, a, you know, a, a, a very, very heads up play that I don't think a lot no, of players so would just get it next time. <laughs> okay, here comes another one. A lot of haste is going to be added to the battlefield. Giving the... Uh, so, hold on, so one of them is going to target the elf. The other one... So one of these elves, I believe, is a 2-1. Otherwise, it, one of them won't be able to Yeah, attack. I think the, yeah. one of the Storm Seekers targeted itself, and then I think... Yeah, I think the other trigger might have gone at one of the elves. So this 1-3 can block the 2-1. The other 1-3 blocked the 1-1 one, one elf. You could trade for the Muta Vault, and then... I guess you can take six if you're Derek, or you can chump block with the Skyclave and take three. Or, so we're taking yeah, five, or here, five right? excuse me, five, yeah. yeah. But Derek to four. Clearing up the battlefield a little bit, but, you know, both of these on the battlefield, still in a top deck and one. The problem is you know next turn it's not going to go too well for you. Like, you know, we, the Sigmatic's still on the battlefield. Lots of opponents uh, are now on the battlefield. We can get a four-drop orb, as we've been speaking about, a seven-drop. Our life total is at five, so, you know, we are still in risk of something crazy happening. We've, like, you know, I've been able to steal an Atraxa or, uh, you know, being able to get something like a Thrill Seeker a Victory, sneak out those extra points that we need. We're going to start with the Chains of the Rocks. Nice little one-mana answer. Take care of one of the Storm Seekers. Now, Will, I know it's been a couple of turns, but I believe the Leyline Binding is on Storm Seeker, right? Uh, I want to say yes. I believe it. Yeah, I think it's on the. It was on the flip Storm Seeker when it because it was night at the time. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. So you do have to. You do have to remember for Derek is if you do sacrifice the Binding, Hunter does get that Storm Seeker back, even if you get you know like an Atraxa or something. So. Uh, it looks like we are going to go ahead and sacrifice that binding. I'm, again, I'm curious to see if he wants to just get Agent of Treachery because that one plays around atop that Crone War, or if we're going to go ahead and get the Atraxa. We are going to get the Atraxa. Mm. So, I mean, I like I it. Guess, I actually like it. Uh, sort I'll of give you one. Down. I'll give you one turn. You know what I mean? You've got one turn to try and get this win. If not, a nice like hitting you with the 7-7, seven, seven, flying lifelink, death touch, uh, uh, Phyrexia in general. I'm basically, I think I'm going to be turning this game around. Plus, on the flip side, I get to look at also the top 10 cards in my library, put one of each card type into my hand. I do have things like Leyline's Binding in my deck. Uh, we see, I think that's a mummy pulled to one side and a couple of others. I think that's four cards going to hand. I believe that's the maximum you can get out of this deck. I think it's Enchantment, Land, Creature, Artifact. Yeah, that's the four types. And uh, let's just scooping that one up. So we're going to be get, getting, get, having a game-free momentarily here. And you know how much I love Game Freeze. I love Paper Magic. I love Game Freeze because we get to see as much of it as possible. But I, chat, I need you to tell me, who do you think is going to win this one? Are we on Ag Mac Fires? I need to see ones. Are we on twos? Are we going to see Gruel take it down? Let us know in the chat while we fly up while me and, uh, me and Doomix start talking about this. So now we're going to be on the play for Gruel. We know how important that is, getting that turn one elf down to be able to produce the turn three play. We need to start dodging things like portable holes and chain to the rocks. Is you know, if you had to bit pick here, which side do you think is more favored? And especially after Cyborg, we know there wasn't many Cyborg cards for the Gruel deck in this matchup. I mean, I still think I like Derek's side of things because once Derek has his engine going, it's really hard for the Gruel deck to be able to come back from certain th certain plays, especially with Enigmatic Incarnation. But obviously, you know, Land War Elf into Stormseeker on the play can you know really really get the job done. And if you you know look at Derek's Derek's deck as far as removal spells for turn one elves, there's only two portable holes and four Chain of the Rocks. Uh, so you know, and Chain of the Rocks is a little dicey because you can only cast on turn one if you have exactly Sacred yeah. Foundry. So if Derek doesn't have a turn one removal spell for an elf and we just go elf and a Stormseeker, then that could just be a too much pressure before Derek to even set up. 
So how aggressively do you mulligan in this matchup then? Like, you know, you know that you need to slow that early game down. How aggressive are you on Derek's side going to be mulliganing? If you have like a, a quite a good hand, like, you know, I've got like a turn of three ley lines binding and oh, maybe I've got an oath, but I can't cast it. My mana's a bit awkward. How much are you going to mulligan down? How uh, much emphasis do you put on these like tw- turn one plays, turn two plays? Well, I think from Derek's side of things, I don't think he can realistically keep a hand with a, a, a one or a two meta play. Like if his first play is like, say, Fable into Enigmatic Incarnation, that's no good. We can't keep that. So you do need to have some sort of interaction in the first two turns. And then from Hunter's side of things, I think you are also aggressively mulliganing into Elf and Stormseeker because you recognize that you can't give Derek a lot of time. That is by far the best one two curve that you can possibly have. So I think both these players are going to relatively aggressively mulligan Make, for those makes sense i think they're just coming to the end of the shuffling now so we'll move back down to the match where we're going to have game number three round number six remember ladies and gentlemen this is the nrg series in indianapolis pioneer 10k event where we've got 227 players all battling out in nine rounds of magic then we're going to follow that up with a top eight it is closed deckless until we get to that point and then basically What's on the line? Lots of money, lots of points. Everybody trying to get themselves to the end of the year players championship where we're going to see 16 players battling out in a $25,000 tournament. Not many chances left to do that. Only two weekends of events and this is going to be one of them. We've got our opening hands here. Derek having a little look-see. Obviously not going to say if he's keeping or uh, going to mulligan just yet as Hunter, I imagine, is on the play. I'd bet a lot of money he's going to say I am on the play in game number three. <laughs> Weird thing could happen. <laughs> Something tells me that Hunter did not choose the draw with the Atlanta Ralph deck. I'm, I mean, you never know. Well, look, I've seen weird things in Magic, and I, I must say, I have registered eight rack once or twice in FNM and regretted it. But you know, it's uh, I always like to throw people off. You know, what I mean, keep them guessing. What you do is you play, uh, you play your, you know, modern infect deck, and then choose the draw so people think. They I've got a good story rack. in Europe. Um, we had a, a Pioneer event in Europe, and uh, you know popular streamer uh mtg personality sodak turn one goes turn one sacred foundry tapped his opponent goes turn one mute vault into um aether vial his opponent registered full uh modern merfolk in a pioneer tournament and didn't know it was like oh okay cool oh, and just no. absolutely classic <laughs> love to see it but now both players off the races and as you see here hunter on the right of your screen on the play with that created turn one elf white bordered are you a yay or a nay let me know chat Darren, what, what, what about you? Whiteboarded or no whiteboarded? Uh, well, those are the oh, elves that back. I have. So look at this. Here we go. Elf and a Stormseeker. And we did see Hunter Mulligan. Mm, it's almost you, like well, I'm a prophet. Look, will. Look, there's a reason they got you in the both booth as the expert and me as the weird British guy that can barely speak English. As we're going to see, Chains of the Rocks come down. I imagine that's going to target the uh, the two free. But, we, you know, again, maybe we want to cut down on mana. But no, we're going to get that out of here. That's going to be the one thing that does the most damage. I am... I'm with some of chat. I don't want I don't want whiteboarded, but how about this? How about a second one to follow up? That's another four points of damage coming across, putting the pressure on Derek Davis left your screen. This is I'm getting flashbacks of game one here. This is the exact same thing that happened game one. Derek had, uh, you know, the first removal spell for the Stormseeker, couldn't kill the second one, uh, was just was forced to pass the turn. Now, hopefully for Derek, he doesn't have to pass the turn again because if that Stormseeker flips, we are very likely done oh, here. No, he... So really needs to find just some sort of spell to cast. He shocked in that breeding pool. We got we got a play here. Just what is that play going to be? It needs to be good. We've only got access to one white mana, so that turns off a couple of the spells that we'd potentially kind of need in this uh, spot. But free mana is going to be a binding. binding. A full cost binding at sorcery speed. Why are we doing that at sorcery speed? Uh, cause you don't want it to flip. So if you, if you pass the turn, then they, they would flip tonight. And then even if you binding the storm seeker, let's say Hunter maybe has something like a cinder vines, right? Cinder vines to pop the binding. That would mean that the storm seeker is still flipped. So if let's say Hunter still has, yep. See the cinder vines, you, can <laughs> you are good at this. Ley line binding, <laughs> get the storm seeker back, but it's not flipped. Okay, we're just getting across the one there. Not blowing it this turn to potentially get the uh, the plus one, plus O oh on that elf. Any reason for that? Would you have liked to have done that? Or do you like holding it up here for potentially you know, future enchantments? Because there's always going to be future enchantments come down as we see here with the Mirror Breaker coming down. So there's an aggressive line where you pop the binding or there's a conservative line where you save it for enigmatic. I kind of like just popping in main phase because if you pop the main phase in the binding, you get the extra three damage in because you can attack with the Stormseeker. 
And even if Derek's best, you know, let's say Derek worst case scenario goes land enigmatic incarnation, he doesn't have the binding anymore. So the only thing you can sacrifice is the chain, which Derek doesn't want to do that anyways, because that gives Hunter another storm seeker. So I think I yeah. might have liked main phasing it, but Hunter with the conservative play. Now you uh, said that I actually really like your line. Yes, so potentially we could be two points deeper here and Derek could be at five, which in this deck, every single point counts. Doesn't look like we're, we're, we're struggling on our land drops a little bit here, but we do have that elf, so access to four mana unless we, we do have a land drop. We'll see how we want to move forward here. That is going to be a stomping ground uh, shock. Not what Derek wants to see on the other side. Now, how can we move forward here for I Hunter? Hunter lining up a lot of mana here. That is an Azika's Chariot. I don't know. This is this is what we call a combo. Well, <laughs> Azika's Chariot giving haste. It's pretty, uh, pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. We can uh, also we can attack with the uh, seeker as well, right? It is a two three. Yeah, I'm curious as to why we did. Maybe attack. are we missing? It, 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 did it come in this turn? No, because the end of turn. No, because I thought he popped the yeah. cinder vines end of turn. So he popped, yeah, popped the cinder vines end of turn. Maybe it's just a. Uh... I don't know. No, no, no. I'm not really we'll, sure about we'll, we'll that, but in out. any case... It's fine. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot on the other side. Derek definitely on the back foot. Down on lands, down on permanents, down on blockers, and more importantly, down on life. Probably the only thing he is up on is cards. Can he get back into this? A player of his caliber, more than capable of it. But does Oh, need... chat brings up a very good point. So I don't know if you noticed this, Will, but there is one mana on Hunter's side of the battlefield that is untapped. Asika's Chariot is a legendary creature, and there are two two-power creatures to crew it. So if Derek goes for, let's say, a Enigmatic Incarnation, Hunter could then use the two untapped creatures, crew the Chariot, and use the green mana to besage you. So that's why we didn't attack with the Stormseeker. I understand the line. I'm not sure I like the line. I would just think, okay, cool, whatever. I got another mana, and I'll take the hit. But, you know... All these little things do add up, and chat is never wrong. You know that. I know that. Chat knows that. They're never wrong, even oh, yeah. if they are wrong. But this is going to be a lot. So we're playing the uh, the powerful free free. We're deciding to gain four life because uh, I guess we're adding it up instead in. of blowing up the chariot here. Uh, Derek. Yeah, and if we just do math on the battlefield, if you go animate mute vault, and then you use two cats to crew the chariot, you pump the muta vault, you send everything. The chariot gets blocked. That's two, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe ten damage coming through. So to, on my math, I think we're one short. Uh, again, I'm not the best at math, Will, so I might have done that wrong. But we'll have to see what uh, what Hunter. It's comes fine. Math with. is for blockers. That's you know what I mean. That is true. I'm an in effect player. Math is for blockers. You tell me if you think you're dead, and I'll tell you if you are dead afterwards. So this is the Besaju that you spoke about. So now it's crude. It gets back the chain to the rocks. Oh, wrong. It targets the chain oh, to right. the rocks. Yeah, the Besaju Unchained this definitely closes this because you get the Stormseeker back, which is an additional attacker, and it's an additional plus one point of damage. Well, so it, yeah, this should be more than enough. Yeah, this is so that, that's why it was an end of turn. Destroy the chain. Get this back. That's going to give more things plus one, plus zero. Oh. Everything's going to get turned sideways, and we are going to see Derek Davis taking his first hit here, and Hunter going to be advancing to 6-0. and oh. Really well performed here. Play draw. Very dependent, especially when you're on the, the the aggressive aggro deck. But you know, this is Magic the Gathering, and it is paper. Some things go crazy in this game. Maybe the Hunter doesn't attack with the ball. Maybe he doesn't see the line. Maybe you know, then it, it's been a long day so far. We're gonna call it. So we're calling it. Yeah, I think I think what happened here. I don't know if you guys were noticing this while Will was talking, but Hunter crewed the chariot and then tapped all of his creatures sideways. And then I think realized after he attacked that he forgot to attack with Muta Vault. And I think we're asking if we can get a Judge Rewind to the point where we can attack with the Muta Vault. Because with, with, without that Muta Vault attack, well, Derek's going to get another turn, I believe, because it's three, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, the Muta Vault is exactly lethal, I think. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. So there we crew that one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think you're. Uh, yeah, I think we are going to be one sure. And this is what I mean. This is what I mean. This is paper magic. This is what I love. You're dead on board, but your opponent can like you. Know, these things go. We've seen it at Pro Tour Top Eight where people don't do things. Hazrat the uh, is uh, the one that comes to mind. These things do happen, especially when you're on camera, when you've already played five hours plus of Magic. You don't know what time you go up. It's one of maybe you traveled there today. A lot of factors go into playing gaming Magic, and that is why we all love watching this game. We're going to have this uh, this judge 
Yeah, so we're, basically there's a judge call currently going on. So we're going to head back to the booth, show you our beautiful faces, going to remind you what is going on. And then the second that that game starts concluding, we get the answer, then we're going to head back down to that. So welcome back to the booth. My name is Will Hall, better known in the internet as Will Hall EXP. That man there on my virtual news booth next to me is none other than Doomwake himself. Uh, you know, he is a Super League superstar. If you didn't check that out this week, you should, because NRG sponsored that series as well, and it is amazing. 16 of the, the best MTG celebrities all battling out to try and crown themselves the champion of the modern Super League season number one. But more importantly, this weekend, what is happening? Well, today, we have got the Pioneer 10K. We are live in Indianapolis with 227 players have turned up to try and battle it out to get themselves into that top eight. But first, nine rounds of magic stand between them and that top eight, and then three more to crown ourselves a champion this weekend. But maybe Pioneer is you know, not a jam. Maybe you've seen it, but it is going to be the RC format in America in uh, December, I believe it is. We've just had ours in Europe. Maybe Modern is what you're more interested in. Well, then tomorrow is where you want to be tuning in because tomorrow we've got team trios. That means three players all playing Modern. They could all potentially play all three of the same deck. Devin, if you were playing tomorrow, which deck would you be on in Modern? Uh, probably Rhinos. Uh, okay, and who would be your two teammates? Mm, aspiring spike and young dingo literally right here i'm literally <laughs> right here and you just threw me under the bus but that's two good choices let's be fair i'm pretty sure one would be on bean and one would be on a boat and wizard's train don't come at me i can't say the word scam um i think i'd be i think i'd be on yorian and i don't know i think i'd like siggy just to rub it in your face because i know you and siggy are friends i'd try and get siggy True. out of uh semi-retirement even though he's been streaming quite a lot recently we just want to play limited so and um I think I'll get Jesse. Jesse's been on an absolute tear at the minute on the uh, vote deck. You know, I think that's a good person to get on my side to be able to try myself a, a victorious champion. I think that's the 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 skill bit in team events. It's just find two players better than you that are willing to carry you the whole weekend. That's how I do it. But, you know, it's up to you, chat. You let me know how you go. What deck would you be playing today in Pioneer? And what deck would you be playing tomorrow in Modern if you were turning up to the NRG series? Or maybe you've got some of the, we've got some future events coming up. But while you type that out, I think the match is about to get ready again. So we're going to head back down to the match. We're going to get the uh, producers to say, am I what the outcome of that was? Or Oh, it's still going, apparently. I've been told we're not, that's not going to happen. Uh, but I think in this situation, it won't be a rewind. But, you know, we're going to talk about, let's see what events are coming up. What we, we all know that every time Will does an NRG series and there's future events, we'll find some facts about future events. So the next one is Madison on November 25th, 26th. On the Saturday, we have got a modern showdown, 10K event. And on the Sunday, we have got a pioneer trial event. That's going to be 5K itself. But are you ready for some Madison facts chat? Are you ready, ready. Mr. Doomway? Let's go. This I'm first ready. one. In Madison, Elvis Presley famously broke up a street fight in 1977 while he was in his car traveling to the show. That's uh, that's not something everybody knows, but now you do know. If you want to know it or not, that's a different story. And I'll give you one more. Another music-related fact. And this one I think will hit more home for me and you, Doom, because we speak a lot about music. We say that I used to have the best music on Twitch. You now have the best music on Twitch. Now that I don't stream anymore. A little bit of poke at you there. But... Nirvana recorded its breakthrough album, Nevermind, in Madison. That's your two facts today, ladies and gentlemen. I've got I've wow. got more for later on, but I need to keep it. I need to keep it uh keep it up. It looks like the game is ready to go. So we're gonna move back down to there, see if we can find out if that mute vault is gonna be animated or not. What's your money on? I'm gonna say not because we got to the screen the table first. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, he he already went to attacks and stuff. It looked like he it definitely made a movement to go to attacks. But I mean, this is a really, really you see breathe a sigh of relief. If you're Derek Davis, you know, you thought you were dead on board effectively. And uh, it's, you know, you get to these spots and you just sometimes you just don't got you. Sometimes you don't concede, you know, it's, make your opponent do it out. It's not great. Let's just put it out there. It's not great. We might just have another turn before we're dead. But True. if you look at look at what's going on in the battlefield, no spells are cast. And so now it's going to be night, which means the, the Seekers obviously flip. Uh, uh, to the uh, the other side of it, which I can't remember. It is a 3-4 that gives uh, tight creature you control plus two plus Owen gains trample and haste. So, you know, we're getting trample plus an extra plus one there. How can Derek pull this out? I think it needs to be... So hear me out, Will. Go right. What if we go Fires of Invention, Enigmatic Incarnation, Sacrifice the Fires, get Tulsimir, Tulsimir get a 3-3, three, three, fight a 2-2, two, two, gain 3 life, pass. That would flip the Stormseeker because you played two spells. That gets you to 4 with two blockers. Maybe that's enough, but Derek does not have that. 
this how about this one how about we offer the handshake and we just concede the game because i can't do much when i'm behind on permanent and i'm behind on life but welcome back to the booth ladies and gentlemen it looks like we're going to try and get the the uh, in, uh, interview with our winner, uh, Hunter. So, you know, if you've got any questions for them, whack it in the chat for us. Because, you know, it is this is going to be a community sort of tournament. We want to get your input as much as just, you know, me and, De uh, and Devons. We, you know, we've got uh, questions to ask. But if you have any particular of why they're playing X amount of cards, or I want to know if it's a 75 from the, uh, the European Championships. That was only a few short weeks ago where we saw this gruel deck in the top eight also the key card so the, that's how it's going to be but while we do all that background sort of information move it across what's what was the key cards you think stuck out in that matchup for you Devin? reckless storm seeker will both games we saw you know uh on the the grill player have elf into storm secret the first one got answered the second one just ran away with the game and uh that card is just so powerful when you play it on turn two every other it just puts this like it's so much pressure on your opponent. Every single creature that you cast from now on has plus one, plus seven haste. And it just, it provides so much damage from the girl side I of things. I think across all three matchups, we must have seen, what, like nine copies of that card? You know, and what, and, you know, and them coming out and then coming back in and all the craziness that comes across with it. But, you know, that card is super, super explosive. I, the thing that's, why would we play one Hurst in the main? That's like a card that you normally see in sideboards. This one, we have one in the main for this deck. What's, what's the reasons behind that? So there's been a really, really big uptick in uh, Is It Phoenix Online, and I think that is true today as well. There is a ton of Phoenix decks, so just having that kind of sort of safety valve game one, it's almost gives you a little bit of pre-board action because that card is really, really good against Phoenix being able to eat their graveyard, not only get their Phoenixes, but prevent treasure cruises and temporal trespasses. So I think that's probably the reason for that. Uh, we can hear some shuffling going on on our ears. So I think we've got our winner, Hunter, in the booth. So we'll be able to move across to him and start asking him, how does he pull off this amazing 6-0 and o currently in the NRGs? But we'll wait till we go across. There he is. Hey, what's how are we doing, Hunter? Welcome. My, obviously, uh, Will and Devin in the booth. We're going to ask you a couple of questions. Hope you don't mind. Also got some from chat. I'm going to start off with one from chat. Uh, chat wants to know, what was your inspiration for playing Gruul this weekend? Uh, I've played Gruul throughout my entire Pioneer career, like just playing Pioneer. Played NRG Louisville, top eight it, lost to Connor on a two Molda fives. And I've played ever since, and I've pretty much won almost every event I've played on it, except for big events, of course. <laughs> well, here we excellent, go. excellent. Talk to me. So I'm, I see that the, you're playing four copies of this brand new card, the Huntsman's Redemption. I've seen a lot of people play this card over the past couple of weeks, especially with the regional championship that recently took place. Uh, how has that card been for you? It's been great. Uh, it kills on turn four quite consistently. Uh, I haven't been r playing it too well today, though, because I've been playing a lot against Phoenix and Red Black, and they kill your board efficiently. So in those matchups, you probably might want to board out a couple. But using it to grab Hazard against Red Black has been stellar today. Because you can get, yeah, Hazard, as we see here. I'm looking at this list, and it looks very familiar to the, the RC lists that we saw the uh, in the European Championships. Is this where you got the list from, or is this your own build, or is it very close to it? And if so, what changes have you made? Uh, well... Colts haven't really changed much, except for the new cards, you know, that came out recently, the, the Saga and stuff. But, yeah, I got off the RC. I have not playtest Pioneer since Dallas, I believe. So I've just been rocking it today, no playtesting at all. Just doing boats. It's going well. Yeah, I, I guess the other question that I have for you is, uh, what match, so now you're 6-0, and you're really just crushing the tournament so far. Uh, what matchups are you looking to dodge, and what matchups are you looking to face the most? Well, I got th I got Phoenix coming up next, I believe. Hope hopefully not. There's one other player I think I can play, maybe two more. Uh, Phoenix is gonna be kind of rough. I won on the Moldo five earlier today, but that was just luck. He got stuck on one land. That happens in Magic. That does happen in Magic. Hey, last question before we let you go and you know get yourself some water. How many times on the play have you turned turn one elves this tournament? Um, almost every time. I think actually, I've it must out. be nice. I've it must very be hard nice. for it. <laughs> If you don't okay, turn so one else's in, deck, yeah, you don't. So that's, you that's, don't play that's it. interesting for people that are just picking up the deck. So you are actually quite you mulligan quite aggressively to that turn one elf. Yes, in most matchups I will mulligan the five for a turn one elf, like green um, control maybe. You just have to be aggressive against those matchups. Red black, no, I actually board out a couple elves. Phoenix, I board out a couple elves, but against a lot of the matchups in the meta, I will mulligan the turn one. Super interesting. Well, thank you very much, Hunnick. Good luck carrying this on. Six and O currently. That is not an easy feat to do, but you imagine to do it. Fingers crossed we get to see you in the top eight. We'll let you uh, shoot off, get yourself some water, and we'll uh, potentially see you soon. Thank you.
appointment we're going to head back to the booth with me and Devin. we do have a backup feature match for you all i've been told that's a complete lie and we do not have a backup feature match for you all but what we do is we can go over the future events that are coming up in the nrg series so obviously this weekend we're in in indianapolis this is going to be pioneer today 10k tomorrow we've got the modern teams trios that we spoke about free three players per team free modern decks so if you want to see that tomorrow make sure you hit the follow button make sure you follow all the socials for the nrg support everything that this company is doing because they are amazing to put on these awesome events for us next up though we do have madison which means i get to get my facts back out mr doomway can i know how excited you are about will facts yeah so, more more facts but first off it is obviously madison november 25th and 26th so that's the weekend after uh thanksgiving i believe Saturday, we got ourselves a 10K modern showdown. Sunday, we've got ourselves a 5K pioneer trial. That is going to be the last time that someone can win and get a direct invite to the end of year player championships event, which we'll be talking about super shortly after this Will Hall fact, which I'm going to go with. The city is named after James Madison, the fourth president of the United States. Did you know that? I did not know that, but you now do I do now. And so does everybody in chat. But anyway, moving on, talking about the end of year player championships <laughs> event, we've got all sorts of stuff. We can see the leaderboards in it. We can see who's already qualified. We're going to get them up on screen. So this is the leaderboard, the points. This is what we talk about. For winning one of these events, you get yourself 30 points. Coming second, you get 25, and it filters down. And these are the players that have been grinding out all throughout the year. You'll see a couple of players there highlighted in orange. That means they're already qualified. So, you know, we see St uh, Stefan there at the top just absolutely killing the field. Almost 100 points. We see Kyle, we see Roger. But look at the rest on this leaderboard. Who's sticking out to you, Doom? You know, you grind with these players. You've seen them week in and week out. You're on the continent, though, and I'm not. Who is, do you think is you know got a real good shot here at getting in points, uh, points out of the way? Who can kind of get back up here? Well, you mentioned Will Kowalczyk, uh, number four, undefeated at our tournament He's so far crazy. going into this crazy. round. Benjamin Ungar as well, also undefeated. Uh, Ryan Hayes, Sarah Shearing, Fletcher Johnson, Cliff Boyer D having, you know, respective weekends this weekend. So, you know, really, when you come down to these last two events, there are definitely a lot of points up for grabs, and these players will be battling it out to see who gets to play in the end of year championship. Well, let's find out who is in that end of year championship already. We've got a load of names locked up in it from all the events we've seen throughout the year. Absolute killers in the respective field. And, you know, you can always go back and watch all these events on YouTube if you see them. Who are these? If you had to put money on one of these players right now, take down the end of year uh, championships. Friends aside, because I'm pretty sure you know a lot of these players, who do you think is going to be able to, you know, snag the big pot of $25,000? Stephen Dykeman. That's my pick. That's your pick, just straight off the bat. Yeah. Okay, I like it. I like it. Any reason do you want to follow that up with any reasons or just uh been on an absolute tear this year and obviously he's got the he's got the biggest smile, maybe the second biggest. I think Matthew might be following up for a smile on the screen. <laughs> he's but, just, he's just been crushing it, so but we're gonna obviously add this weekend one name to this board. But you see uh, six places there at large. That is gonna be where the top six players on the points leaderboard at the end of the year are gonna get themselves invites to that list. Craziness is one of the things that's going to be going on and a lot of battling outs. Every point does matter throughout all these weekends that you've seen these players, um, you know, going head to head. But I've been told that we need to go for a list because we need to get you out of here because there's going to be it for you. And then we're going to get uh, another six foot two individual in the booth. Have you got any last words to say to chat before we uh, you know, send you off? It's been a great time. Thank you for having me as always. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity and I hope you guys have a great rest of your turn.